Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create gradient filled spirals in Illustrator. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's have a look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. This is a spiral shape that I've created in Illustrator and I'm going to show you how to create this shape and also how some really, really minor changes to the shape can totally change how it looks. So let's get started and to do so, I'm going to start with a brand new document. My new document is a thousand points by a thousand points in size, but it doesn't really matter too much how big or small your document is. I'm going to target the ellipse tool because I want to draw a very small circle. So I'm going to hold down the shift key as I draw out a really, really tiny circle in the middle of my screen. I don't want the circle to have a stroke, so I'm going to remove the stroke and for the fill, I'm going to use a gradient. And I'm going to open up one of the gradients that's shipped with Illustrator. So I have here the swatches panel, which you can get to by choosing window and then swatches. And I'm going to click its little flyout menu here in its top right corner. And from the flyout menu, I'm looking for open swatch library. So I'm going to click on that. And then because I want to find gradients, I'm going to click on gradients. And here are all the gradient collections that are shipped with Illustrator. And I found that the color combination ones are pretty good, so I'm going to open those. But you should feel free to experiment with others later on. I'm going to apply the second gradient in here. The first one is called magenta green yellow and the second one is purple green gold. And I'm going to use purple green gold. I'm going to zoom in here so that we can see the gradient applied to our circle. And I've opened up the gradient panel again. You can get to that by choosing window and then gradient. And I'm going to move all these little gradient stops a little bit closer to each other because I'd like to get even a little bit more variety into my gradient. And then I can hold the Alt key as I drag on these colors to duplicate them. So I'm getting the same colors, but I'm getting a little more of them in my gradient. And then I'm also going to look at these stops at the very top of my gradient. I'm going to move some of those very close to the colors because what happens when I do that is I end up with colors like this yellow here that look a little bit more like stripes than a gradient per se. And so I'm going to do a green one as well. Just to move them just that little bit closer. And that's going to give me something just a little bit more interesting later on potentially. So once I've created my gradient, and I don't need to be too careful. It doesn't have to look any specific way. It just has to be a multicolor gradient. I'm ready to create the shape that we're going to use. For this, I'm going to zoom out. So I'm going to press Control and 0. And then we're going to use Distort and Transform. So I'll click Effect, Distort and Transform, and then Transform. I want to turn Preview on because I want to see what's happening as I'm making changes. Now I want probably to start off with something like 150 copies of this shape. So I'm going to type in 150. And I want them to move, but I don't want them to move very far. So I'm going to move them each one point. So I'm just going to move them in a horizontal and a vertical direction one point. And then I'd like my dots to get a bit bigger. So every time we create a new dot, I want it to be just a little bit bigger than the one before. So let's set this to 102. And I'll set the vertical to 102 too, so that we're creating circles and not creating ovals. Now I closed my dialog by accident there, but I have my appearance panel visible here by choosing window and appearance. So I can reopen my transform dialog by just clicking on the transform appearance. So let's go back to where we were. All my settings are still in place, but as you can see, my circles have taken off down the bottom right corner of my document. Well, let's bring them back and we can bring them back by increasing the angle. Every time we add an extra degree to the angle, we get more of a curve in our shape. And you can see here that we're getting our snail. 
this is the basics of our snail shape. Now we can go ahead now and do other things. One of the things that we can do is to change the rotation point. So if we change the point around which this rotation is taking place, different things are going to happen to our shape. Here you can see that the shape is more open and in other places it could totally change the shape. So you just need to choose something that looks interesting to you and then work with it. Now I'm liking the one that I had where everything was in the middle so I'm going to keep sticking with this shape. But let's look and see what happens when we wind our angle up higher. Every time we do that the shape changes just a little bit and the way that the colors are appearing changes too. You could also change the amount of horizontal and vertical movement. Take it out for example to two points and here our shape has taken on a completely different look. It's still a snail but it's not quite the same snail shape as we had before but then it changes again as I change the rotation. It would change too if I change the scale. So you can get different effects using this and it really is as simple as creating just a single shape and then rotating it using the transform tools. Now you can experiment from here and apply different gradients to the shape. I'm actually going to save my gradient for now so I'm just going to pop it up here in the gradient swatch and let's select a different gradient. Well a different gradient is mapped onto the shape in a different way and so we get a different effect. Let's see what happens when we add a solid color stroke. Well this stroke is really quite thick and the reason is that it's being scaled along with the shape and if we didn't want that to happen let's go back to the appearance panel here. Let's double click on transform. Let's turn the preview on and you'll see here that scale strokes and effects has been selected. If I disable that then the stroke that is around that initial shape, the very very small stroke that's around that circle is now applied to every single rotation. The stroke is not getting bigger with the circles. So you may actually want to go and perhaps even increase the stroke size so that you get a darker stroke but it's not being scaled with the object, it's staying the same value. You can create shapes like this so easily. You don't have to rotate circles but circles are certainly very interesting to rotate and if you have your shape selected and you start working with for example the gradient, because these shapes are live you'll be able to see the changes to the shape occurring as you actually tweak on the gradient. You can also make changes to the shape using the transform tools and any change in that transform dialog will affect the shape itself. So there's a lot of potential for creating really interesting effects with just a single shape. And if you've created this shape you can also crop it. So let's go and get for example a star and I'm going to just go back to the regular fill and stroke by pressing the letter D and I'm going to draw a star in the middle of my shape and I want it to be encompassed inside the shape because in a second I'm going to use this as a clipping mask. So I'm just going to position it in an interesting position over the interesting part of this sort of snail shape and then I'm going to the layers palette I'm going to open up the layers palette. I'm going to select both the star shape and the snail shape. Just click on both of them and choose Object, Clipping Mask, Make. And now we have our snail shape clipped to the shape of a star. And if we go into the clipping group here in the layers palette, I can actually just target the star in isolation to the rest of the shape. And as I touch the up arrow key and the down arrow key and the left and right arrow keys, I can move the star leaving the basic shape in place below. So there's an idea of the kinds of things that you can create using the Distort and Transform tool in Illustrator together with a gradient. 
and there are lots of things that you can do with these. In a later video, I'm actually going to make some flowers using a similar process. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.